Okay, we have our first talk here. This talk is called Nix Modules, Improving Nix's Discoverability and Usability. So our speaker today is none other than Ilko Dolstra. He, I think he's honestly one who wouldn't really need an introduction because he is the creator of Nix. So let me go over the topic of this talk. This talk is about Nix's configuration language, but and it's very powerful, but suffers from a lack of discoverability, usability, and consistency. In this talk, Ilko is going to describe an experimental Nix module system that provides a consistent discoverable mechanism to write configurations such as packages and Nix OS systems, and show how this enables a better user experience for both new and advanced users. And I will say um, Ilko's current work um, setup is that he is a senior engineer at Twig.io, and he joined that in 2018. OK, great. Ilko, take it away. All right, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, great, yeah. Um, let me, uh, so, start my screen sharing. So, unfortunately, it appears that in Jitsi, you cannot uh, share a screen and video at the same time, at least not without the video becoming uh, horribly blurry, so, um sadly you won't be seeing me for the next of the for the rest of the talk uh okay so in any case um thank you all for that F thank you world of peace for the uh, introduction and a big thank you to uh to uh, all the organizers um so yeah of course a slight downside compared to a physical nixcon is that i have no idea um who i'm talking to whether they're i mean i might be talking into uh, a void but uh uh, I'll just imagine that uh, all of you are here. Um, yeah, so this talk Ilko, is about, yeah. Um, let's interrupt you one moment. It seems that at least with um, our infra um, sort of status on your slides and your screen share, I cannot actually see it. So do you think you could toggle uh, that on off? I'm sorry to everyone watching. Yeah. Um, Okay, so tell me when you toggle that again and I will get um, a confirmation that they can see that. Okay, give me one second. I have toggled it. Um, can you please check the second slide? Talk yeah. it shows on the live stream. So I'm now on the second slide. Okay, I believe that your screen sharing is working. You can go to the first slide and begin your talk. I'm sorry about that. It just doesn't seem to appear to me, but it is working a live stream. Okay, proceed. Okay, well, I'll, I'll monitor the, uh, the comments here. So um, yeah, just let me know if it stops working. Okay, so yeah, this, this talk is about uh, uh, a bunch of um, sort of brainstorm sessions we've had, uh, or I have had together with a couple of other people, in particular Rock Garbas, on how to uh, make Nix more beginner friendly and more user friendly. Um, now, so the warning, uh, this is quite, uh, quite a lot of vaporware in this talk. So most of the things I'm describing uh, actually do exist. There is a sort of proof of concept of the things I'm going to talk about. Uh, but it's very far from uh, being ready uh, for uh, for actual use, uh, let alone uh, merging. So this is all a kind of an, an exploration of some ideas on how to make Nix uh, more user friendly in in in, uh, in various ways. But uh, uh, I mean, it's it's very far from uh, from uh, being uh, in a uh, state that you can actually use. Okay, so with that having said, let's uh, uh, let's talk about what the problems are with Nix currently. So Nix is, of course, it's awesome, uh, but uh, it's not very beginner friendly. There's a very steep learning curve, uh, so you have to learn all these new concepts uh, like immutability and uh, Nix store and uh, Nix expressions in particular. That's the big one. There's this. Uh, kind of strange language uh, that you need to learn, especially if you're not familiar with uh, functional programming. And uh, yeah, that, that's a steep learning curve. And probably a lot of people never 
get over that curve. So they just uh, go away and uh, uh, give up. So uh, maybe we can improve that. The second issue is that uh, even if you are uh, over the hurdle, uh, you're an advanced user, uh, th there are actually a lot of things about Nix that are um, just not that great to use. In particular, uh, Nix is, is, is wonderful in uh, how uh, possible it makes, it, it makes to uh, adapt uh, packages and configurations. So there's probably no other package manager where it's so, uh, where it's even possible to just say, uh, I'm going to rebuild my entire system with a patched version of GCC. Um, or I'm going to set up a developer shell with uh, these packages, but uh, in some uh, random combination and with some patches applied and compiled with these versions of the compiler. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's really great about Nix, but those configuration mechanisms are, for the most part, not easily discoverable. So you, you, you need to basically Google about them to find out that they exist, how you use them. Uh, uh, yeah, another problem is there are actually a bunch of configuration mechanisms and they all work in slightly different ways. Um, and uh, they're often not very easy to use. So what can we do about this? So in, in this talk, I will discuss uh, adding a more uniform, uh, sorry, there was a comment. Ah, so uh, yeah, so we're going to try to provide a more uniform and discoverable configuration mechanism make things more discoverable from the command line uh, and maybe, and this gets a bit controversial, provide a simpler configuration language like TOML for simple projects. Uh, so that would make the uh, hurdle a, big, a, a bit less uh, big for beginners. So a quick look at uh, the configuration mechanism in Nix packages and what the problem are. Uh, so you have function arguments that override config overlays NixOS modules. Uh, so all these things have sort of grown organically over time and they're all slightly, well, they serve different use cases, but uh, um, uh, it, it, it's not clear, for instance, why uh, for NixOS we use these modules and for packages we use this function argument style of uh, configuration. Uh, in particular, the function argument style uh, that's uh, this style uh, where you uh, you write packages as functions uh, that uh, uh, take a bunch of uh, arguments like uh, the dependencies and user configurable things like CUDA support. Uh, so this is the Nix expression for Blender, which you can uh, can enable CUDA support. Uh, so if you build this thing, uh, yeah. So if 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 you want to. Um, uh, have Blender with CUDA support, there's actually no way to find out that this option exists except by reading the source of this Nix expression. So uh, uh, it, it's not discoverable at all. Uh, and once you have discovered that this option exists, maybe by Googling about, uh, about it, uh, how do I enable CUDA in Blender, uh, you can't actually use it from the command line. So you might think that something like Nix build Blender Arc CUDA support true does the right thing, uh, but it doesn't uh, because that argument doesn't get propagated all the way down. Uh, other problems, there's no type checking. It's kind of ugly that it mixes uh, user facing configuration with uh, dependencies. So this is not a very great um, configuration mechanism. Now, uh, we have dot override. I won't go, won't go into details, but dot override is another of these things that grew kind of organically. Um, it, it has all sorts of problems. It's inefficient uh, because you need to, to under, uh, under the hood, it, it calls a function twice uh, just to get this dot override function. Um, and, uh, and it leaks memory. So if you're wondering why uh, Nix evaluation takes um, multiple uh, gigabytes. Well, this is one of the reasons. Yeah, then there is the, con the Nix packages configuration file. Uh, so you can put things like this 
inside a config file. But again, uh, it's not discoverable. There's no type checking. Uh, it's not obvious how you use it from the from the command line. Um, so yeah. Now then, finally, there's uh, overlays. Overlays are great, but the syntax is kind of mysterious, um, and it's also not obvious how things like nested overrides work. So if you want to override something at top level, it's easy. If you want to override something uh, deep down, like in, in, in Python packages, uh, it's, uh, it's not obvious how it works. And then there are Nixos modules, and Nixos modules are, are great, they're awesome. Yeah? So they basically tick off most of the boxes. They're discoverable, uh, you can just type man configuration.nix. Uh, they have documentation, they have types. Uh, I mean, there are some problems, and they're entirely a library feature, so Nix uh, the command line tool doesn't know anything about them, so there, you, you can't easily query uh, NixOS options from uh, the Nix command line or, or set options or, or do things like that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so let's, as a solution, um, since Nix, NixOS modules are so great, maybe we can just use NixOS modules everywhere. So turn NixOS modules into a language feature, maybe make some improvements, uh, like uh, clean up the syntax and the semantics and then use it everywhere. So instead of, for instance, having functions that create packages, we can have modules that create packages. So here's an example of uh, what that looks like. Uh, so this is a, uh, a module that builds Hello World. So if you know NixOS modules, then the syntax is probably familiar. Um, probably we would actually want to improve this syntax if, this, if we really turn this into a language feature, because then you're no longer confined by uh, having to have uh, yeah, these weird constructs like having config uh, as a function argument and, and as, a, as an attribute name. But uh, apart from that, it, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it should look familiar. Uh, so, um, so what this module does is it extends a bunch of other modules like standard env. So in the in this modular world, uh, we no longer have a function called standard env dot make derivation. Instead, standard env is a module that you can um, extend or inherit in your your own modules. And that should, in theory, make it easier to combine modules. So, for instance, if you have a package that both includes Rust code and uh, Python code, you could just include uh, the, uh, the module for building Rust and the module for building Python. So, what this module does is it, uh, it well, it, it says hello world by default, but the, um, the, the text of the greeting is uh, configurable at compile time. So it has a who option that you can set at, at, at build time. Um, and that option is used in the configuration of this module. So the configuration sets a bunch of options that it inherited from uh, the standard env module and the package module, uh, like uh, uh, the, the package name, the version, the build script, um, and that build script then uh, generates a, uh, a hello world binary. All right. So how would you use this? Well, basically the same as how you use uh, Nix uh, now. And so but by the way, I should mention that this is uh, intended to be part of a flake. So modules.hello would be a flake output. So just as a, as a flake can have packages now, it, it can have modules. So if you say nix run dot hello, that will build the uh, the hello module from the flake in the current directory and, and run it. And that's actually equivalent to building and running uh, modules dot hello dot final dot derivation. And derivation is an option uh, inherited by from one of these uh, modules that we're extending, uh, like standard env. Uh, that evaluates to a derivation graph. And so just like in, in NixOS, you have a option called system.build.toplevel, which builds your entire system. Uh, here we have a output option called derivation, which uh, uh, 
um, uh, yeah, uh, returns the derivation for your for your uh, package. Okay, so uh, the whole point was to make things discoverable. Uh, and now we have that because uh, we have a standard structure and we have options that have uh, uh, descriptions and types. Uh, actually, we don't have types yet, but uh, we could have them just as in the Nixos module system. Uh, so, yeah, we can discover uh, via command Nix list options and that will show us all the options uh, in this package. So. For instance, this, yeah, this is how we discovered that this thing has a who option. And then we can override this from the comment line. So we can, for instance, say Nix run hello, and we can override who and set uh, who to Nixcon. And that will build a uh, new derivation and, and run it. Now you might be thinking, aren't flakes supposed to be uh, hermetic? Uh, so you, you can't actually uh, override something inside a uh, flake. So what this actually does is it, it, it on the fly, it constructs a new flake in a temporary directory that imports uh, the, the, the flake in the current directory. Um, so basically it generates something that looks like this. It, uh, uh, and, and this is what you would write yourself if you, if you were trying to extend the module. Um, so uh, I, you could have a flake with a module named my hello that extends the hello module uh, and sets Nixcon to who. So this is basically uh, the replacement for the dot override or dot override derivation uh, mechanisms. Uh, another nice thing to mention is that we now have uh, a documentation mechanism, a, st a standardized documentation mechanism. So there is a command called nix doc that given a flake generates the documentation for that flake, just like uh, cargo doc. Uh, it actually uses uh, uh, MD book, which uh, is also what cargo uses. So uh, it uh, takes all these uh, markdown doc strings of all the options and modules and uh, generates uh, documentation out of them. So the goal here is to have a, uh, a, a standard, uniform uh, configuration or documentation mechanism for all flakes. So in the future, you should be able to say Nix doc on any flake and, uh, and get documentation out of them. All right, final thing to mention is, uh, um, is the beginner friendliness. So, uh, if I go back of two slides, so this uh, Nix expression, uh, there's a lot of mysterious code in here, huh? like this whole self hello stuff, um, uh, this this uh, config thing over here. Uh, so that's uh, might be uh, daunting for new users. And in fact, it's uh, kind of unnecessary because with, with modules, uh, modules are really just name value pairs like who Nixcon. So uh, you don't need the whole Nix expression language just to uh, customize a, um, a module. Uh, so the idea is you can just write a TOML file. You still have to declare your flake dependencies, but then you can say uh, who is Nixcon uh, oh, and of course, we're extending a, a certain module, and, and, and that's it. So, uh, yeah, you could have uh, a, a more user-friendly uh, syntax. Um, and another advantage of a simpler syntax, uh, like TOML, is that this is easier to generate. So we can have a, a command line mechanism to uh, to modify a flake. So we can just provide a command to uh, set options or, or add dependencies to a Nix shell or, or things like that. And uh, that's less error prone than telling new users that they need to edit a Nix expression uh, and, and get the syntax exactly right. Uh, so uh, that's, the, uh, that's the idea. All right, so that's, that's it actually. Um, so the next steps that uh, we're interested in doing is, uh, well, actually try to um, um, 
improve the syntax and semantics of this toy module system because right now it's an extremely uh, bare uh, copy of the module system that Nixo has, has and it, it's, uh, it has no types or merge functions or stuff like that, so it's extremely bare. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'd like to come up with a better syntax and semantics and improve on the NixOS module system. For instance, it would be uh, great to actually have um, uh, sort of proper scoping. So for instance, a module should not be able to access options uh, that it hasn't explicitly uh, inherited from, from, uh, uh, from another module. Uh, and, and of course, we need to do a lot of experiments to, um, to see whether uh, a, a, any new mechanism uh, actually meets all the current use cases for uh, uh, the, the, the current, currently existing configuration mechanisms. I mean, uh, uh, so stuff like uh, overlays or package sets. Uh, yeah, we, we need to see whether we can actually do that. Okay, so uh, yeah, th there is a proof of concept implementation, but uh, so it, it contains all these commands like nix doc and nix list options. Uh, so you can actually play with it, but it's uh, very uh, bare at this point. And there are actually some uh, examples that you can check out. Uh, and there is a uh, document somewhere that has more uh, ideas about uh, 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 yeah, these, uh, these language changes. All right, that's, that's it for this talk. I understand I can now answer questions, so I need to figure out where I can actually see the questions. Hi, so I will just read those off to you. Ah, you actually, um, you are running early, so your Q&A will actually have two extra minutes if you want. Uh -huh. Okay, let me read the first one we have in the pad. So this is from Andy on Freenode, and it says, what is the cost of having more features that other language already built into Nix? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't quite catch it. Okay, I can repeat that. What is the cost of having more features that other languages already built into Nix? Uh, what is the cost? Well, um, obviously there is a cost in terms of we have to implement it. It makes the language more complex because, of course, the existing uh, language features don't go away. Um, but uh, I mean, there's also the cost of not having this. So if we um, uh, don't improve sort of had things like discoverability, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, uh, it, it, we, we might lose a lot of potential users. So uh, I more see it from that perspective. I mean, all of this is motivated by thinking in, in terms of uh, uh, a use cases. So uh, if a user wants to, uh, say, set up a, a Nix shell, uh, what do they need to write? And currently, if they, for instance, want to write a flake for their project, they have to write a lot of boilerplate code just to get that to work. Uh, so then you need to think about, well, what would an ideal uh, uh, Nix expression look like? Or maybe you, should, you don't want to write a Nix expression at all and you want some, some other uh, syntax for that. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I guess that's not a very good answer, but uh, uh, I, I don't actually know how to quantify uh, uh, the cost very well. Right. I do like that you're considering um, what an optimal Nix expression would look, at, look like. So the next question we have is from David AK, and it is about why was TOML chosen? Do you think you can answer that? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm not very married to, uh, to TOML, but uh, um, it, it exists, it's well known. Um, so yeah, a lot of tools have support for it, editors have support for it. And uh, I mean, you could go for JSON, that would be the, um, the simplest choice, but JSON is maybe a little bit too primitive because you, you can't even have things like Comments in it, at least not in a, you know, in a nice way. Uh, but yeah, so JSON, TOML, YAML, those would be possibilities. And then YAML, I mean, YAML is maybe a bit too complex. Um, but yeah, so so TOML is kind of 
has, has a, uh, it's, it's not too bare bones, so it, it, it seems like a fairly decent uh, uh, choice. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's a fairly decent choice as well, actually. I think out of, out of those three options you mentioned, you picked the best one, but that's just my opinion. So we another question from Andy, and it's, um, I hope this is an okay question to ask. You can tell me if it isn't, but will I also need a Nix integration test at some point? I wonder what's wrong with just Nix build, the attribute flag, and then doc. Ah, okay. Um, so that actually uh, works. You can. Uh, no, sorry, does it work? Uh, no. So um, it's so ideally at some point it would just work. Yeah? So you would just have uh, uh, an, a dot doc option that generates the the option or the documentation for your module. Uh, but well, no, actually that that would be quite hard to do. Um, no, so yeah, so so the Nix doc command internally actually it um, it actually just builds a Nix expression that takes the uh, the flake as an argument. So there's actually not a lot uh, mysterious going on there. So you could actually do it with a, a Nix build and probably with an, an argument, but. Uh, I mean, that's not very user friendly. I mean, you have to, again, uh, we want to get, avoid magic in, incantations. So just saying Nix build or Nix doc is a lot easier than figuring out the correct Nix build uh, uh, attribute name and so on. I hope that uh, answers the question. Yep, I think that does. Uh, let me see if there's any more questions. Um, I actually do not think there's any more questions, and I believe that ends the Q and A portion. So yeah, we are on time for that. So I guess this concludes your um, talk today. So thank you so much. I also I would like just to mention something just briefly before we um, sign off. I really do like your avatar um, on GitHub as Dexter. Is that some sort of inside um, sort of thing? Like, because I do notice that Dexter is sort of like a precocious, like little, um, like genius that um has like a laboratory in his room, and he's always working on experiments. And I've noticed for the past NixCon that you've also just like talked about your experiments, so you're both sort of like scientists in your own right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not really a, a, any deep thought that went into that, but I I, I was a Dexter fan uh, back <laughs> in the nineties, and uh, and and we both wear glasses, so I I, I guess that's. Uh, close enough. <laughs> okay. I guess that signs off for, for today. Thank you so right, much. Thank so you everyone, so much. everyone in the chat, please put clapping emojis or, um, you know, loud clapping sounds. And, you know, we're live and direct. Can you also like, I don't know, we're, we talk about binaries, put ones in the chat, like go crazy. Come on. I want to see the chat go crazy. Come on. Okay. With that out of the way, I think I have to transition into a different room. So it may be a disjointed disconnection again.